So I want to thank Cohen Media Group. I am especially Justin and Diana and the entire staff for organizing this event with us because this event is extremely important for us, for our festival. Uh, actually, our diaspora film festival started with Leon Prudovsky. Not only with him alone, but in 2010, um, I had a call from the Israeli consulate. Uh, it was a tally, a great woman who was working in the film department. And she called me and told me that a group of young uh, graduates, actually from Israeli cinema schools, coming to New York. They have amazing films. And she offered me to make an event. When she sent this film to me, I was amazed. I said, oh my god, this is like a new wave of Israeli cinema. I never saw anything like that, and everything looks very, very potential. And this is how it started. So the first, the name of the festival was Russian, um, Israeli-Russian Film Festival. Now we call it Diaspora, because we uh, bring some other our compatriots from the Soviet Union, uh, immigrants. Uh, working in cinema, but the core of the festival still uh, Israeli-Russian. Uh, maybe as we say now, Israeli-Eastern uh, European, because we change a little bit Russia to Eastern European, and actually it makes sense, because our ancestors didn't uh, live in Moscow or St. Petersburg. I talk about our grandparents. It was forbidden for Jews. So they lived in the so-called uh, uh, Pale of Central Settlements uh, in contemporary um, Belarus, um, uh, Ukraine, uh, Poland, part of Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, etc. So this is where we came from. And uh, in this place, uh, you know, we uh, think to, um, uh, before that the culture, our culture started with the Soviet culture, with the Soviet cinema. But actually, uh, our roots are much deeper even in Eastern European uh, places. Because in this uh, pale of uh, settlement, it looks like very poor people live there, but it was a great civilization. They lived there for a few centuries, and they had great uh, religious institutions. They have tzaddiks, they have uh, philosophers, they have uh, educational institutions, and they have amazing literature in Yiddish. And actually, this literature inspired so much, uh, you know, next generations that were actually founded uh, cinema industry in the United States, a cinema in the Soviet Union, and in Israel as well. So, and Leon Prudovsky, he is a, like a life confir uh, confirmation of this tradition that it's going on from there. Because all this uh, um, genre, which we call now dramedy, like a combination of drama, a tragedy, and comedy, uh, self-irony, all shades of um, um, mockery and uh, uh, irony and uh, jokes and so on and so on, everything coming from this Yiddish literature. We remember our grandparents uh, my grandparents, so one said, unfortunately, was killed uh, in Holocaust, but the other one, they were so happy that they survived. They lost everything, but they were always happy and always joking and always laughing. And our house was always full of love, uh, laughing, laughter. Uh, so this is like our tradition, and Leon Prudovsky repre represents this uh, tradition. So Leon, I want to start with one question. You came there in 2010, in 2010, with a group of um, young filmmakers. It was Vena Gorin, it was uh, 
um, uh, Roman was next year. Um, uh, yeah. Can you tell me uh, about this generation? It, it became like a phenomenon in Israeli film, uh, noticeable, like wave. Or how actually, what actually happened, you know, last, let's say, about 15 years? Uh, first of all, good evening, and thank you for having me. It's a big honor and a pleasure, of course. Um, it's, it's kind of hard for me to, to answer this question because it's kind of a question about me. So um, we just made films, uh, first student films, then bigger films, then feature films. Uh, we did what we could, so it's, um, I wouldn't say that it's a phenomenon, we just we like movies, we're trying to, to create them. Um, I think uh, what, uh, your introduction was, was, was very interesting and, and, and uh, it's, it's kind of how I see that as well, because uh, I mean, I, I, uh, I, uh, I read a lot of Yiddish literature uh, when, I was young, when I was younger and and I still read, and I, I think I'm inspired a lot by that. So I am sure this is part of the, what, what I do, actually. Uh, I guess I'm not alone. Um, but it's, it's, it's kind of too big for me, like the new wave on us. I'm, I'm, I'm not yet, but maybe in the future. So maybe in 15 years we will see it. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, much more clear to the picture. Yeah, oh. in, like the age in cinema, it's uh, when you're 45, it's like you're very young. So, uh, oh, so uh, we have more time, hopefully, in the future yeah. to make more films. You know, um, a famous uh, Czech writer once said that Israel is the heart of Europe, that it's beating outself, uh, outside of itself. I very really like this um, expression because this is like also Eastern European and Europe beating, you know, heart beating in Israel. And uh, this is why we are so attached to Israeli films, because they are very human, they are about people, they are storytelling, and uh, they are also funny, also funny. Uh, so, uh, what also I want to ask you, so we're all coming from our childhood, and this um, movie, Welcome, uh, it's exactly like by the eyes of a child. But now you want to turn this uh, short into full-length movie. What potential do you see there? Um, well, first of all, I wanted to tell you that we have uh, uh, one of the actors of the, of the film here. Uh, Gera, you're here? Yes. I, is it you? Yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, yes, that's the uh, great actor, great personage. Um, yeah, so we're, we, we're, we, we want to make this uh, feature film out of this story. I mean, I, I've been writing this story since uh, several years. Uh, and hopefully Kara will like the script at some point and he will participate in the <laughs> You haven't read the script uh, yet. I trust you. I trust <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, actually, the, uh, the, the story of the short film is, is kind of, uh, it's the opposite of what I'm trying to make now because uh, I was trying to write this, this feature film story uh, about like 15 years ago I, I think I was I was too young and I, I couldn't succeed in that. And at some point I just left it alone and then they were looking for a short script. So I made a short script out of the of the long film which wasn't yet written, but it was easier to make a 30 minutes uh, script. Um, and now, like 15 years later, I, I kind of try, I, I get a bit uh, older, so maybe now I will be able to write the script. I mean, I am able. So um, so I've been writing for several years, um, taking this, this anecdote, making it like a more dramatic uh, story. It's still a, a um, tragedy comedy, uh, yeah. tragic comedy or dramedy, whatever they, they call it. Uh, but the the thing that I was trying to 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 make is just to make it more dramatic, and not just like a funny if a funny anecdote about not having enough money to uh, to enter Israel with the corpse. So let's make this. Uh, 
So now it's it's kind of uh, we have much more uh, um, characters, and uh, I changed many characters, and but still the core is uh, uh, there's a kid and his grandmother uh, is dead, the um, the, the the less. Uh, um, uh, a convenient moment moment of, of the uh, of the repatriation of the immigration and they need to enter Israel so they they make uh, the clerks believe that she's still alive but, but, but the boy Misha still will be there this time I think this time he will be uh, I mean I know he will be uh, 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 not behind the camera uh -huh. I will I will stay behind the camera alone this time and um, the thing is that uh, actually the idea of making it f uh, uh, from his point of view, it was a, a, it's funny. It was a, a, a budget question actually. <laughs> uh, the script wasn't written like in this way, uh, and we didn't have enough money. And my producer he said, "Listen, we, we cannot really produce this film with the money that we have. So uh, you need to find how to make it, to make it like uh, simpler." And it took me a while until I had this idea that if this is the kid who makes the uh, who films everything, so basically uh, uh, all the camera movement they will be much simpler, and it will be uh, um, like the production value in this sense will be uh, not as big as I would have liked to be because you know I wanted the the plane and a lot of people like one thousand people coming out of the plane and all that. And we didn't have the money for that. So this is how you imagine that the people are there, but you cannot really see them because the kid he's he's just not tall enough to yeah. to show all those people. Um, so this time uh, I cannot really uh, see how I can. Well, I actually, actually I have uh, multiple stories. So we have like about five different, uh, four different stories, in and this film. in the in the in the new film, the feature film. So the kid won't be able to see and to shoot everything. So he will be in one of the stories, and this time it will be filmed by a professional filmmaker, uh, pro professional cameraman, I guess. Interesting. Mm. So we will be waiting for this movie. Um, you know, also, um, in one of your statements, you say that everything is like coming from yourself, from your vision, of course, like every other artist, but also from your um, uh, experience and so on. And um, also very important element of your films if, uh, is the communication, the understanding between people. Uh, started with the dark night which finally is such an extreme situation where people found a way to communicate Microphone. and to help each other. And, uh, and it was, um, at the end, it was a tragedy uh, because the situation is tragic, uh, but, um, but communication. And um, um, uh, how um, Adolf came up, you know? Uh, it's not from your biography, it's not from, you know, your, you understand what I mean. Yeah. Uh, how it, it came like from outside, but at the same time, it also has this theme of communication. Because only through communication, they became close to each other, and they understood that they are victims of uh, the violence uh, and uh, regime and so on and so on. Uh, but 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 still, how it was developed? Yeah, I'm trying to to connect the dots in my head, the communication and how uh, how we came up with the idea. Um, so the communication, I guess, this that would be just part of what whatever I'm trying to say and whatever I'm trying to show. That that would be the part of it, I guess, because I like languages, I like communication, I speak several of them, and so. Um, so that's a more important part of my um, of my uh, um, of myself. Uh, the idea for the uh, for the film for the new film, uh, my neighbor Adolf, um, actually it came for it, it did come from my personal story, I guess, in a way. Uh, so I, I it was 2010, I think, and I I went to some festival in Brazil, and I came back and I was speaking to my um, my childhood friend. Who is a scriptwriter as well, and I was telling him about the, everything I saw in Brazil. He said, "Listen, let's make the story. Let's let's write a script about Adolf Hitler, uh, who um, he, who uh, came to Brazil uh, to hide, uh, like the the boys from Brazil." It was this, this film about uh, yeah? So uh, uh, 
I, I, at first I was kind of shocked. I said, why would we, why would we write a, a script about Adolf Hitler? I, I couldn't even imagine how I'm trying to think about his character. And so I said, no, listen, no, I, think, I don't think it's a good idea. But somehow I was kind of obsessed with this idea during the, the, the night that I went to sleep and I couldn't sleep. And I was thinking about Adolf Hitler, but actually more, I was thinking about my grandmother, how she would think about Adolf Hitler. She, she, she passed away uh, about 20 something years ago. Um, and she was a Holocaust uh, survivor. And uh, you know she, she, she had all those this, this, the, from the, the post trauma of the Holocaust and all that. And so suddenly it, it, it came to me that um, that we should write the script not about Adolf Hitler but about this Holocaust survivor who who is obsessed with Adolf Hitler like I was this night. So uh, um, yeah, I, I told my friend uh, Dimitri, and uh, he said, yeah, okay, let's 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 write. So it was 2010, and we got some money to write the script uh, 13 years ago, and it took us like about eight years to write the script. Uh, and uh, and I think that most of it, like not the funny parts, uh, like the tragic parts, were based on how I percepted my uh, my grandmother, who passed away when I was in the army. I was like 19, and I I was too young to really to 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 uh, to, to understand uh, her. She she was a very depressed woman sitting uh, in front of the window, looking outside, like in this position. Um, she, uh, um, like in, in this depression, she was like very depressed all of the time, and and I I couldn't really think about that at the moment. So it, now I was like yeah I was older, and uh, suddenly I I started getting like I I, I was interested in, in all those things. So we read a lot of literature about Holocaust survivors and and in Israel and, and not only we put many things that I remember from my grandmother and and from other uh, uh, situations like that. So in a way, it was kind of a, a kind of a, a, a biographic thing, but not for me, but from from the family, I guess, uh, like the genetic memory, and the communication would be actually uh, um, it was so it was 2010, and we had one of the uh, uh, military special operation like we have every every summer in Israel, and. Um, and suddenly the the perception of, of of animosity of of our enemy how we percept him eat uh, them uh, 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 and what we think about it and how is it possible to to have enemies uh, and how complicated could be when your enemy becomes your friend when you get to know him uh, because you stop uh, you kind of you start humanizing like you, you stop and you stop uh, 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 demonizing, demonizing him, and uh, so that's that's how it was born. The idea. Uh, so. Who came with the idea to show uh, not Hitler but his uh, double? Like Shh, <laughs> don't. we don't speak about the uh, the, the uh, film. Okay, yeah. okay. Like because that. this was very interesting <laughs> twist. Yeah, <laughs> this was really great <laughs> because nobody wants to become a friend with Hitler. Yes. But <laughs> 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 isn't it? A victim of Hitler, and uh, you know, person who suffered. It's it, it's kind of a story of two people that that what yeah. got got to the circle of violence, uh, each each in his own way, and, and and they try to cope with that. That that's the that's yeah. the thing. It's like a uh, genius. Uh, uh, whatever side you are, like th this is this is how it works. I guess. Uh, you know, maybe a few words about um, how you work with uh, actors. Because first film, uh, there were like your friends, yes, from the school, students, that you know for uh, uh, probably mm -hmm. from the school. No, actually, actually, uh, actually, Dark Knight, that was my diploma film. So it was uh, like um, after four years after I started the, the, the film school. Uh, and the thing is that I wrote the script, I was writing it during the, the, the last uh, year of the studies and then I, I met this very young producer, like um, I think it was, he, was, he was just one year above me and he, uh, and he said let's try to get some real money for the film and I didn't believe him, I, I didn't trust that it, it, it can be, it, it is possible, but he actually did get some money, like more than most of the uh, of the graduation films. Okay. So we actually 
got some money to pay people, so part of them, like about half of them, they were my friends, mm -hmm. but they got they got the like s s small salaries, and part of them they were like just actors and and and, um, and the crew. So this is actually how I met Pini Tavger, who plays um, the uh, the leading the lead in, in Dark Knight, who became one of my best friends uh, up until now. He was actually <laughs> it's funny like t ten years after he was. Uh, in in the welcome uh, in welcome he was my assistant director mm -hmm. and Pini became a, a, a filmmaker as well um, he's a, an actor and a filmmaker so um, so yeah it was it was half professional uh, half students and, and and friends and we got somebody from the university but then some some money from the film fund uh, uh, so yeah we, we I, I'm I, I love making rehearsals we just we were speaking with uh, with Gary just before the screening and he's he said something he, he just went to uh, he made a series somewhere he made a lead in the series in the TV series and uh, I asked him how was it and he said uh, oh it was it was horrible it was just like with you the rehearsals and like w wait a second it was horrible he said no 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 horrible like like horrible but very good uh, so I normally, as I don't trust my writing, uh, I, I actually, uh, when I work with actors, I, I really try to squeeze them for for the opinions, for the ideas, for for the words, for for uh, for everything, just to make it like a, a mutual kind of work. On, on so on it's that. in part in While right, right, girl, let's something like that. Like, like while rehearsing, yes, like uh, like uh, when we make the repetitions, we we. We make everything like that, and then we, we, we like okay. We decided how we're going to shoot that, and then we don't improvise anymore. We, we shoot it like something like that, right? I think it's always it's always interesting. It's kind of challenge all the time, and I think it's uh, I, I you know I am I'm really missing to work with Leon because nowadays. Not everybody had time to work with actor in this like particular detailed way like Leon used to work. So that's my opinion, and that's why it's horrible because it's a good torture, you know. <laughs> it's a good one. I, I I can very productive, yeah. Yeah, very productive. In 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 Adolf, uh, so I work with two big actors, uh, Udo Kier, who is a German American actor. Uh, who made like about 380 films, I think, uh, kind of small roles, most of them, but still. And he worked with the, like the best directors, the most uh, famous directors, uh, like like Fassbinder, Lars von Trier, and uh, whatever. And um, and he he's a kind of a, a, a kind of an actor who actually goes inside the frame and he fills the frame and he and he acts like he feels, he plays himself and and all that. And uh, and David Heyman, who is a Scottish direct, uh, Scottish actor and director, and a very very professional guy, very very uh, talented guy, and so uh, uh, who plays on stage as well. So he came to me and he said, "Listen, but I I need you to know that I really need that we made some rehearsals." And I said, "Yeah, sure, of course." And then I went to Udo and he said, "Listen, but I have one one thing. I really need that we don't make any rehearsals." I said, "Yeah, sure, no problem." So we came to Colombia to to shoot and uh, and actually it was it was I don't re really remember how was it the first day there, but they came three weeks before the shoot and uh, and the producer and the the assistant director and, and and the other assistant we had to like to to convince both of them to to go in the same way. So it was like three very hard days, but. Finally, we made the rehearsals. Maybe not as much as I would like, would have liked, because um, because uh, when when you work with young actors, it's it's much easier to to control them and yeah. to 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 work with them. And when you work with people who are like double your age, it's it's um, in, in the way of of course of, of their experience, it's it's much harder, and uh, and it's much harder to make them to trust you. So yeah, that was the, the biggest, amazing, the biggest yeah. challenge there. But I guess we, we made it. So. Yeah, we made it definitely. Um, you know, um, we uh, are coming out of COVID, of three years of lockdown, and we all feel it. Uh, we know that uh, part of our film goers, um, 
are not coming to the films anymore. This is the example. A uh, very, very like devoted person who is coming to all of my events, uh, but he's just one from his generation now. And uh, also younger people, they also used to have everything on YouTube and so on and so on. Uh, so what do you think as a film director, a strategy? Because it's very important to bring people together. You know, in the Soviet Union, uh, we said, uh, I was a critic, theater critic and uh, art critic, and we said that theater uh, actually substituted church because church was not available uh, in this country. And uh, because people need to get together, People need the spiritual uh, and the social gatherings, uh, emotional, you know, to, to be united by the same emotion. And this is very important for the health of the society, actually. And now we are losing this quality. What would be the strategy? What do you think? How to bring people back? <laughs> Uh, I I don't think we can really fight the time and the um, and the 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 um, technological developments and all that. So uh, and really, COVID it made so many changes in the industry, and we see now much m much more um, like serious TV series uh, than films, and um, most of the money goes there. So it's it became much harder to make films, definitely. Um, I do believe that uh, that uh, as theater survived cinema and television, yeah. theater survived. Uh, I guess cinema will survive television as well uh, and internet. Uh, although I do believe that it, it might oh it, it it already became something more like theater. Which is less, um, which is smaller, which is uh, rarer, which is uh, more intimate. Yeah, more intimate. I guess like th this, this, uh, this, like this, uh, this intimate place. That that would be something that I guess um, most of the like art films. I'm, when I'm saying art films, I I'm saying not Hollywood blockbusters, right? Because uh, uh, this is a really something that stands. Uh, um, uh, alone, uh, so uh, I think it, we will still have everything like that, but uh, much uh, smaller. And uh, just uh, I hope we will be able to make more films. Yeah, I hope that films will be done. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, they will not go away. Uh, but uh, we will see how it will develop. You um, said that um, your film was uh, premiered at La Carna, um, and you had incredible experience, yeah? When you were in the huge yeah. theater. Yeah, well, actually, I think uh, when we were presented here, so it was, it, someone said that it was a world premiere here, so it was a New York, it will be New York premiere on the 6th of June, of June. Uh, for Adolf, but so the world premiere was in Locarno in Switzerland, which is one of the biggest, although not the biggest festival. Um, it's a very nice uh, European festival, which um, uh, so we got into this section uh, called Piazza Grande, which is uh, uh, they 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 make uh, projections of films every night during the whole festival. Like what ten? They choose ten. I think it was ten films or nine, something like that, or twelve though. Um, they screen it every night in the in the the uh, uh, the main square of the uh, uh, of the city of the town. And uh, there are about 8,000 uh, um, uh, viewers. Uh, so uh, it was kind of overwhelming, of course. And I remember when my co-writer, Dmitry Malinsky, uh, um, when we got, we got up to the stage and we saw those people, that was a real, real shock. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he whispered to my ears, listen, this is the once in a lifetime uh, situation because you're, we are, we make cinema, we, we are not rock stars, but 
8,000 people, that's more of a rock star thing. More like a rock star. Yeah, yeah. so that was, uh, that was very, very exciting and um, and was very, very nice uh, that during the screening, uh, oh, I was very afraid how we will be able to hear everything. It's, it's the, this, the amphitheater, it's open air and all that. Uh, and actually it was so quiet and, and, and this, I was kind of shocked. You could really hear everything in the film. Yeah, it's probably also tradition for these people. Yeah, see, yeah, of course, but you know, yeah, yeah, festival yeah. and to be there. You know, we are a little bit late, um, um, uh, out of time. But if you have question, please, maybe you want to ask something. First of all, thank you so much. I also live in Israel, so I can recognize a lot of it. And when I say thank you, I hope all these wonderful people join me because that was beyond touching, but also funny and very inspiring. Thank you so much. It is incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was, thank you. It was very, very exciting and touching to see the films like 10 and 15 years later. And thank you, thank you for, for liking, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Quick you. question, quick yes. question. Please. That was a compliment, not the question part. Yes, please. So, um, majority of people rarely have understanding what goes inside creating such product, you know, because it's the, the writing the script, casting, budgeting, location scouting, and all that, and everything, and there's so much more. From your perspective, what was the most challenging aspect of all of this? If you were to single one, what yeah. would you do? Um, uh, so I, I think every project is a bit different. Uh, generally, I would say working with the actors, because this is the only, the, uh, you work with people who will present the film visually. They will be in front. You will see their faces all the time. So they, it's kind of like they, they take the responsibility for that. So you, you need to, to give them w what you can. So it will be like the best way they can do this. And they are human, just like you. Uh, so uh, that's the biggest challenge because y you need to be very, very, very intelligent, smart, talented, uh, uh, um, delicate, and etc., and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it, it, there are always problems in that. So that would be the most challenging. Um, for Adolf, I would say that would the most challenging uh, would be. But you haven't seen the film, so it's hard to speak about it. But but it was the editing process who took like what, which took one one year and a half. During uh, during the pandemics, and uh, 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 the the tragedy, uh, the drama, and, and the comedy all together, uh, the 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 right amount of everything. It was it was like millimeter by millimeter. You try you you would try we would try to 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 uh, to make. So that would be the most challenging for that. Okay, thank, thank you. you because thank you so much. <laughs>